So, it's been a while since I've done a YouTube video, but I was talking with a dear friend who um, said, you know Excel stuff and Google Sheet stuff. I have a question. I have a group of people that are in different committees, and I need to parse this out and put it on separate lists on a separate worksheet. And we went through, and I was like, sure, cheap technology can do that. It shouldn't be a big deal. Um, and we went through it. it and we were going through the fiddly if error um, and index functions and everything just to try and come up with lists that she could print. Um, and it's just way too cumbersome for the average person. So the technology has come a very long way, um, but it, I, this was a great activity to prove that there's still more that could be done. Um, I am going to show you the end result. So here's our beginning data. Um, I actually use a pivot table to get those lists. Um, and then you do have to manually copy and paste into another spreadsheet. Really easy copy and paste, um, but it is one more step. It is not an automatic, you know, connected function, uh, but it is super easy to do. And knowing how fiddly the index and the arrays are to deal with. And if you don't hit control shift and enter when you're putting it in the cell, it'll go away, it doesn't work. Um, this is a very reliable way and a very easy and understandable way to make these lists. So here is the end result. And now I'm going to take you back to the beginning. I, I really wanna encourage you to stay to the end of the video or at least, you know, scrub through to the end. I have another um, example with wedding guest data that I'd like to show you um, for some other other little tweaky things that you might want to do in the future. Um, and also, I'm going to show you now from the start how we get our data nice and clean to be able to do this sort of work. Okay, so here we go. I am using Google Sheets in this um, example. Oh, by the way, hi again, I'm Sandy McVeigh. I didn't introduce myself. It's so nice to have you back. Um, and thank you for coming today. Uh, if you need anything, uh, have any questions about this video, you can just put a comment down the bottom. YouTube does a great job of alerting me when there's a comment and I am here to help if it's you know something that you're just trying to get done in your everyday life. Um, so here in Google Sheets, I'm gonna go to my version history and I am going to go back to my um that's my final sample okay that's where we were and i want to go back to my starting sample okay so i'm going to restore this version so you can see what i started with okay. the first thing i'm going to do is um i'm going to add a new column here for the full name of people because that's what I want to return for the committee. I don't want to have to deal with, you know, a first name, last name, bring that all together. But I do want to keep the last name separate because I want to be able to sort by last name. So we're just going to put in a brand new column and I'm going to do one column to the left. That's fine. And I'm going to call that full name. And I'm going to um, actually get rid of the shading here. Just reset that. I wanted to just point out that I can have lots of other information here that I'm not going to be using that I can hide. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, so this function is called concatenate. Concatenate, okay? And that just brings together text in cells, okay? However you want it. You can see I accidentally clicked and got D3, but I'm gonna click on B3 because that's the first name. Okay, and then you have to come up in, into the formula bar to add something else. So um, your uh, instinct will be just to click on C2 because that's the last name. Okay, but Excel needs a comma in between, okay, to make sure that it kind of closes that first function. And then actually between the first and last name, I would like a space. So for Excel to know that, I have to type the quote mark the space bar and a quote mark and another comma. And now I'll have a space between the first and last name. And then I'll just click the field for the last name. Okay. I wanna close that formula with the parentheses and hit enter. Hey, that looks great. And the suggested autofill is exactly what I want. So I will just click the 
check mark, and now here we go. Now notice that these are all formulas, okay? And that's fine. For our purposes, the pivot table will read this and it's fine. Uh, there may be a time that you want these names somewhere else incomplete. So that's when copy and paste special is your friend. And you can just say paste values and then you'll get the names without being dependent on the formula for the first and last. If you didn't know what that meant, um, try not to worry about it. I just like to throw it in there so that you have that handy. So paste special, uh, if I were to say copy, okay, and paste special, you can do values only. Values will just give you the text that's showing and not the formula behind it. So I'm not doing that for right now because I'm perfectly fine with this formula. I do want to hide this other information that we don't even have anyway, but just to show you that it does not have to be contiguous. It's, it's, you can have lots of other data and that's usually what happens. We have a big spreadsheet and we just need to pull out parts of it. So I'm gonna hide those columns just to make your life easier. You don't have to look at them and neither do I, but we know they're hidden because we go from D to K and we know that that alphabet um, you know, is, exists. And if we were to click that little arrow, it would bring it back and reveal those. So here are the committees. Okay, this is where we need to add their committee. Um, and I like to make a separate page okay, called ranges. Um, and so here this is, and so I've just put in our committee here. Don't worry about no preference. I'll bring that in later and, and show you that later. Uh, but here are our committees and I like to say, choose one uh, and you'll see that in, in a minute, why? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the data, but I want that to be a drop down list here in this, in this um, column. So to insert a drop-down list, I am going to click where I want it to go. Make sure you put it where you want it to go. And we're gonna to go to data and we're going to say data validation. Okay, so if you're working in Excel, this, what I'm doing now is still data validation. It is on the um, formula menu. Um, so you can do that. And it's, it is a tad bit clunkier, but it is very similar in nature. So we go to data validation and there are no rules here right now. So I'm going to add a rule, okay? And so I'd say it's the cell I'm in, okay? That's where we wanna apply it. And we have a dropdown. Now I could hand type those um, options in right here. I could, and later on um, I could add other options, but I'll tell you why. The range is better um, in, in just a moment. The reason that we're using data validation is that these committee names have to be consistent. Otherwise, when we do the pivot table, it's going to give us two different committee lists. So if you have, you know, um, uh, I forget what my committees are right now, but let's say you had um, volunteer and volunteers. Those would be two separate lists. Or if you put a space accidentally at the end when you are hand entering this, you know, it would be two separate things and they would look exactly the same. Okay, so we are gonna do, uh, we want a drop down, right? But we want it based on a range. See, there are all kinds of validation you can do. But for this, we're gonna do it from a range. So we're gonna choose a range and then it's like, all right, where's your range? So we click in this box, we go over to our ranges and I am choosing all of column A. Yes, you'll see a lot of people that just choose that specific range. What will happen is if you don't include some blank rows, when I wanna insert no preference as an option because, oh, we didn't think to add that originally, it won't be included. If I click A, okay, as my range, Ready? Here we go. I'm going to select my range. Come on. And it doesn't want to select. So I will. There we go. Because it's on a different sheet, we have to make sure that it's including the worksheet. So I'm going to actually name this range. And it's very easy to name a range. I'm going to click up in here and I'm going to call it committee but I'll just say calm because I'm the only one who's ever gonna need to know that. So the drop down from the range, okay? And you'll say, what does that mean? 
So now I have from that drop down, if I go there, home is always going to be there. No matter what, what sheet I'm on, if I go back to the data and I choose com, it takes me over to the ranges. So it knows that that group of cells is called com. So I can type the equal sign. I see it's giving me uh, a little nudge here. Oh, look, and see now it, now it, now it picked it up. Ranges AA. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't like it before. So and it's okay. So ranges AA, it could also be the equal sign COMM -M for that range. Either way is fine. We'll click OK. And now you'll see that it has actually pre-filled all of these. Okay. We're not going to choose allow multiple selections, but we'll do that on the wedding sample. And I'll tell you why then. Okay. We're all happy to go now. I'll just say done. And now when I come back to the data, okay, we see that it still has a blank. Choose one is there. And I'm going to select choose one. I'm going to actually make this a little bit wider too. And now um, if you see, if I double click, it doesn't. I will be so glad when Google Sheets um, does the double click to auto fill down. <laughs> it doesn't quite do it yet. I know it will. I have to just click on that little icon in the lower right hand corner and drag down. And now I have this data validation in every single one. Okay. So uh, now I can go through and from whatever notes I have, I can start assigning people to their group. Okay. Um, now that's when I get to the point, oh, I, I need, somebody wrote in no preference. And my boss said, I'd like to have no preference as an option. So I'm going to take this no preference and I'm gonna just drag it over into that range. And now if I come back to the data, you'll see that no preference is an option. If I were to use the data validation, let me open that back up again, where I'm editing these, by hand instead of using a range, what would happen is I could add it, but then I'd have different ranges for the people that have already been assigned to a group. They wouldn't have no preference in there. And if I wanted to update it so that everybody had the same listing and I copied it down, I would overwrite the preferences I've already assigned for the committees. So by using the range, it gives you the flexibility to tweak your, your setup without rebuilding from scratch. Okay, great. So now we have our nice full name. We have our committee. They're all gonna be filled just perfect. And those are just great habits to get into when you're dealing with data. So now we're gonna go to the pivot table. And for this, I'm just going to, uh, well, I'll show you how to make it first. So we go insert pivot table into a new sheet, okay, and you get something that looks like this. So for our purposes, we want the committee, and we're gonna put that in the rows, and we want the full name of the person coming. Now, people know about pivot tables all the time about uh, you know using it to sum big data, but if you put both of these objects, uh, the both, both of these fields in the row, you're not, we're not using the columns at all, and we're not doing a lot of counting. It's fine, okay? You can do some counting. If you were to also put the committees in the columns for counting, uh, no, that's not what I wanna do. Um, let's take that out, but you could. Uh, you could, you could, oh, I'm sorry. You can put it in the values. That's what I want. So if you put it in the values for counting, uh, but now we've, oh, I've lost the committee. Here we go. Okay. So you can see how many we have in each committee this way. So let me go over this pivot table frame over here. These are your fields. Okay. Your row, your column headers. That should all seem very familiar. It's even showing the ones that are hidden. So you can pull that in at this point if you need them. We chose for the row, the first option was committee, and then the full name of the person who wants to join the committee. And then we don't care about all these columns. We're not gonna deal with that. But for the values, we want to count 
how many are going to be in each committee. Now, right now, you know, I just did a few people. So let's go back, okay, right now, um, and a few more. Uh, I'm going to actually say all these people want logistics, okay, just to give you a quick example. Now you can see the logistics is up to 10. And these are the 10 people that would want logistics. Okay. Notice when I came back that I have lost my pane for the pivot table. If I want to adjust it, it's down here. It's this little, this little green pencil here. And then that brings it back so that I can make any adjustments. Okay. But you see that it, you can see by, you can stretch this out if you want it a little bit. Okay. And you can now uh, say, oh, logistics, we have 10 people in a list. Logistics, that's a that's a lot of people. But, you know, you can then look at the people and say, oh, I know that this person would do very well in the marketing group and we need somebody over in marketing. I'm going to talk to Diana about that. So this is our working data. OK, terrific. But what about for the folks who, you know, just need a printed list? You're going to have a meeting of their group and they need a printed list. So we're just going to add a new worksheet, and we're just going to call it lists. And we're going to come back to our range. And to make it easy for us, we're going to copy these options. And these are going to be our column headers. Um, we might want to add some sort of title along the way. I don't know. So I'm just going to give a little extra space. And I'm going to edit and paste special. And this time I'm going to transpose, transpose that that text, and that way it goes horizontal instead of vertical. Okay, so there we go. Okay, here they all are. And now I'm just going to go back. Okay, and we're just going to come to logistics because that's the one that I had the most people assigned for right now. That's the one that's going to have the meeting. Okay. And we're going to copy, and then we'll go to our list and logistics. And we'll paste that in. Okay. So you can certainly make this page look pretty. Okay. You can add nice color lines, you know, spacing. If you need this to be a sign in sheet, you can make these rows a little bigger, maybe not that big. Um, and I'll add a new column to the left and I'll put in check boxes so that, you know, uh, insert and check box. So that, you know, when we print this out, if they want to check who was there, they can do that. Uh, you could put the date and all kinds of great stuff. So let's say I just wanted to print this section. I've highlighted this section and I go to print. Okay. Um, and instead of current sheet, I'm going to say selected cells. And then you can do all the great stuff as, you know, any formatting. You want your workbook title. You want your sheet name. You want the current date. You know, whatever you need, and then you can go ahead and print. And there you go. And then you would have like, you know, a roster for this meeting. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of that. So hopefully that has gotten you to point A from point A to point B pretty quickly. Um, I'd like I have one more example to show you. So I'm going to go into my version history. And I'm going to bring back my final sample and restore that version. That's going to overwrite what we've just done. But here I have everybody all assigned. Okay, Here's the pivot for the, for the committee that I just showed you. Here's who, who ended up being on logistics, totally different people. Um, but we can see the people that have no preference. Okay, So that's 22 people. So our manager may really want that to get them on a committee, figure out where they fit. Um, and if we had... We still have some people that it says choose one. These people haven't chosen anything. So these people that said no preference said, I don't care. I'll serve wherever you need me. I like everything. The choose one are people who haven't been put on a committee at all. Maybe they didn't show up to the meeting. Maybe they didn't submit the form that says what they like. Okay. It's a, it's a granular difference, but it's an important difference. Okay. And here's my ranges. That looks really familiar, right? And then here are my complete lists. I just opened up that pivot table, did a quick copy paste based on what we have. So if my manager wants those no preference people to look at, 
it's easy for them to see. Okay, for my second example, um, I was thinking about the wedding conundrum of assigning people to tables, and I thought, oh, this would be a swell thing. So um, here's a bunch of people. Okay, here we've done a data validation. The, the thing that is different, um, so we're going to open up the data validation and take a look at this one. I made one different change. Okay, um, I said allow multiple selections. Could have done this with the committee as well, but we were keeping it simple. So we have some people that like mm, this family that they could sit at table four or table eight, you know, table six, table three. What I don't have the ability is to say, don't sit this person at that same table. You have to know your guest list. OK, uh, we still have a lot of a few people left to assign, but table eight is a very popular table. So that's what I want you to see. So when I made the pivot table, which is exactly the same, um, and the ranges, I made tables as a range. I could have typed them in, but who knows? If I decide to add more people um, at the wedding venue, I might want to add table 16. And remember, if I've hard-coded that in, then it's not across the board. And everybody I've already assigned to a table won't have the option to choose table 16. So use the range. Ranges are good for you. And I made that a tables range, okay? Um, so this is the same sort of idea with the with the pivot, okay? And this shows you the, the ones that are sharing. Now, um, let's say we wanted to have this little thing. I know that I can only fit eight people at a table. So I put a conditional formatting over here to say, if it's more than eight, let me know. So this is how we do that, okay? Um, all I did was I just copied this pivot table. I didn't start from step so from scratch. And then over here, I, um, I pasted it, okay? And then I'm gonna close my data validation and open my pivot table calculation. So let me move this over so you can see them both side by side. So you're like, how did you get from that to that? It's a simple thing of saying, I want the counts for the table. Now, the problem with that is that you kind of lose this other granular data about your people um, when, when you do it this way. But it does have an advantage. It is still linked as things update. They, you know, they'll change uh, in both of the pivot tables. So it's nice to have both of those views separate, okay? But I want to apply conditional formatting so that this table eight, okay, has more than eight. It's not that it's number eight. I didn't even realize I did that. Um, but I want it to trigger me to look at it if I have more than eight people at any table. So I am going to go to conditional formatting. Where are, where are we? Oh, it's under format. Sorry, not under data. Format, conditional formatting. This is also available in Excel and the home ribbon. It is such a fun thing to use, okay? So um, I, my criteria is not, is not empty. I want to know if it is greater than or equal to the number of seats at the table. So I'm considering going for smaller tables, like six person tables instead of eight person tables. So we'll see, we'll do that. Um, my fill color is green because usually we want to see things that are good, but I want to do a fill color of red. I don't really like that super bright red. And I can even make the text yellow if I prefer. Doesn't matter. You can rule away. It's so much fun to do conditional formatting. Okay, so now anytime a table reaches that criteria, you're gonna see that trigger. Great, but let's prove that it is linked back to our data. Okay. Uh, the way this worked, if you had more than one table, and 12. Oh, yes. And that is only going to work well. <laughs> uh, if I wanted to try more than one table, you can see they have checks now. And I can even do three if I want it. That is going to give me another unique criteria on your pivot table. So you want to be careful about having the combinations. And I can't remember what other. Hmm. I think it was six. Was it six? Okay, 
I think that might be enough. Let's go back and look at our pivots and see what happened. Okay. So this is what happened. We have now, okay, there's that entrance with four and eight again. Okay. But now we have another one that's eight, six, and seven. All right. We need to choose one of those because you can see that it's saying that eight, six, and seven is its own unique value, and it's not. All right. So this is such a nice little mm, cross check when you're doing these table assignments. So let's let's just take a look at uh, Frederica. Okay. And we're going to put Frederica and Hel Hilda at table four because table four has space. So we're going to go back here. And I'm almost done. Thank you for hanging with me. Okay. Uh, and there we go. We're putting them just at table four. Oops. Sorry, I want to keep them at table four, not at table eight. And we'll go back to the pivot. And so it's now that entry is gone. We have five people at table four. Okay. Um, so it's really nice. It's a really nice little sample. And then you can see our new one. If we go with the smaller tables, six tables, uh, six to a table, we have a few other tables that are over the count. So I hope this has been a helpful review for you. Um, introduction on how to make these lists. Uh, and it's it's just, it's very quick when you're doing it your own, but more important, it's very transparent. You are not dealing with a fiddly if error index array, blah, blah, blah thing that if anybody touches it, it can break. So this is something that you can use every day easily and explain to other people. So good data practices. We want to have the names using concatenate in one field. We want to use a range to have our um, information consistent. We want to use data validation to make these drop down lists. And then we're going to make pivot tables to make the final list that we simply old school copy and paste onto another page to print as needed. So I hope you found this valuable. Thank you so much. Um, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.